Hi friend, this is Aryan and you are watching the Cool Mentor. So, this is the second part of 100 Web API questions with answer series. So, the question number 21 is explain authentication in Web API. So, when the host authenticate the user, it create a principle and the host that is IIS attaches the principle to the current thread by setting thread dot current principle so the principle contain an associated identity object that contains the information about the user so if user authenticated that is identity dot is authenticated property is true authentication means knowing the identity of the user wave api assumes that authentication happens in the host for is it uses http modules for authentication or we can write custom http module next question how to set principle to authenticate in web api so when the application perform any custom authentication logic you must set the principle on two places that is the thread dot current principle this property is the standard way to set the threads principle in dotnet and second one is http context dot current dot user this property is a specific to asp.net so in the thread dot current principle uh, we have set the object of i principle interface and uh, in the same way uh, in http context dot current dot user we have set next question how to deal with validation errors in web api so on validation failure the web api do not return error to the client automatically so its controller's duty to check the model state and respond to that so we can create a custom action filter for handling the same next question what is asp.net identity this is the new membership system for ASP.NET that allows us to add login features in our application and below are the list of features supported by ASP.NET identity in Web API that is one ASP.NET identity system and second one is persistence control next question for all uncaught exception web api sends http response with which of the following status code answer is 500 internal server error next question return type supported in web api following are the return type supported in web api first one is void it will return empty content next one is http response message it will convert the response to an http message third one is istp action result so internally it calls execute async to create an http response message and the last one is other types so you can write the serialized return value into the response body next question what is media type in web api so a media type is also called a mime type and identifies the format of a piece of data and uh, it consists of two strings a type and a subtype in http media type describe the format of the message body suppose that uh, application json image slash png text forward slash http these are the formats of message body next question how to add a media formatter to the web api pipeline so to add a media type formatter to the web api pipeline uh, use the formatter property on the http configuration object so here 
uh, we can see that um, I have created uh, the object of HTTP configuration that is config. So we can set in this way like uh, config dot formatters dot add and new product CSV format. Next question. Uh, explain MVC versus Web API. So the main purpose of Web API is to generate HTTP service that reaches more client by generating data in raw format. For example, plain XML or JSON string etc. So ASP.NET Web API creates simple HTTP service that renders raw data. But in case of ASP.NET MVC, it is a framework that is used to develop web application that generate view as well as data. Okay, so uh, ASP.NET MVC facilitate in rendering HTML very easily. Next question: uh, How parameter binding works in Web API? So, below are the rules followed by Web API before binding parameters. That is, if it is simple parameters like uh, bool, int, double, etc., then value will be obtained from the URL. But in case of complex type value, then it reads from message body. Next question. What is the namespace of ISTTP action result return type in Web API? And the answer is system.wave.stp.results namespace. Next question. Explain course that is cross origin resource sharing. So, so when Web API is hosted and other application on different domain, try to access the web api through a request so here we need to enable course that is cross origin resource sharing and uh, as we know that the browsers only allow a web page to make ajax request within the same domain and its security prevents a web page from making ajax request to another domain this is called the origin policy so the course that is cross origin resource sharing is a technique that allows restricted resource on a web page to be requested from another domain next question what is the key differences between web api and mvc routing so as we know that routing is a pattern matching system that monitor the incoming request and decide what to do with the request so mvc application and web api must have at least one route defined in order to function and so the word api at the beginning of web api rot patterns differentiate web api rot from the standard mvc rot and web api uses the http method but not the uri path to select the action next question it's possible to have mvc type of routing in web api yes we can implement mvc type of routing in web api next question what is owin in web api so owin that is open web interface for dotnet define an abstraction between dotnet web server and web application and owin decouple the web application from the server which makes owin idle for self hosting outside of iis so to add owin package uh, simply install package microsoft asp.net web api.owin self host and this will install all the required owin package and web api owin self host packages next question which http verbs allow to create new content of a resource 
HTTP POST is used for dynamic resource creation on the server side. So the data from the client is included in the request body. And uh, HTTP POST initiate an action on server side by identifying the resource from the request body and then store the resources on the server identified by the URI. So, the answer is POST. Next question. What is TEST API? Through TEST API, testers and developer create testing tools and automated test for .NET and Win32 application using algorithm. Next question. Uh, how to handle errors in Web API? So there are several classes available in Web API to handle errors. These are HTTP error, HTTP response exception, exception filters, and registering exception filters. Next one. Which .NET framework supports Web API? The answer is .NET 4.0 and ever version supports Web API. Next one. How we can pass multiple complex types in Web API? So the answer is there are two methods to pass the complex types in Web API. That is ArrayList and Newton Soft Array. Explain exception filters in Web API. So the exception filters is executed whenever controller method through an exception which is not handled and exception filter implements i exception filter interface next question how can we handle error in web api so following are the list of classes which can be used for handling error as i have mentioned before that is HTTP response exception, exception filter, registering exception filters, and HTTP error. Next one, explain OData in Web API. OData is a protocol that provides a flexibility of creating queryable REST service. And OData provides certain query options through which on-demand data can be fetched from the server by the client over HTTP. So, what are the different features of OData? So, OData allows you to create services that are queryable, and OData provide features like filtering, searching, sorting, skipping the data, selecting the data too. Next one. What are the OData query options in Web API? So the first one is select. So select the column or properties in the result set and specify which all attribute and property to include in the first result. Next one is order by. So sort the first record in particular order like ascending or descending. Third one is top. It fetches only top n records. Fourth one is expand. It expands the related domain entity of the first entities. Next one is filter. It filters the result set based on certain condition. It is like where clause of link you. And the last one is inline count. So this query option is mostly used for pagination at client side and it tells the count of total entities faced from the server to the client. Next one, why to choose web API? So if we need a web services and don't need SOAP based service, then the ASP.NET web API is suitable choice. It is used to build simple non-SOAP based HTTP service on top of the existing WCF message pipeline. Third one is 
it doesn't have tedious and extensive configuration like wcf rest services fourth one web api is easy to define expose and consume in a restful way because it is only based on http fifth one it's simple service creation with web api and the last one is it is lightweight architecture and good for devices which have limited bandwidth like uh, a smartphone next one can we use web api with entity framework yes of course we can explain cookies in asp.net web api a cookie is a piece of information sent by the server as the http response it allows the client and server to share the state so we create the instance of the cookie header value class for adding the cookie to an http response that represent the cookie here response dot headers dot add cookie and uh, we have created the classes of uh, cookie header value and return the response next one explain json and xml serialization in web api so web api provide media type formatter as we have already mentioned for both json and xml so the framework insert these formatters into the pipeline by default and client can request either json or xml in the accept header of the http request question number 50 explain json media type formatter so the json formatting is provided by the json media type formatter class and by default json media type formatter uses the json.net library to perform the serialization here you can set where json is equal to global configuration dot configuration dot formatters dot json formatters and if you prefer you can configure the json media type formatter class to use the data contract json serializer instead of the json.net by setting json dot use data contract json serializer to true and the question number 51 explain xml media type formatter so xml formatting is provided by the xml media type formatter class and by default media type formatter class uh, formatter uses the data contract serializer class to perform the serialization and the same way uh, we can set as we have set in the cases of json and the question number 52 explain ssl with web api so the several common authentication scheme are not secured over plain http so basic authentication and form authentication sends unencrypted credential so to secure these authentication we must use ssl and ssl provide authentication by using public key infrastructure certificate and the server must provide a certificate that authenticate the server to the client so ssl works on the public key encryptions and require a ssl certificate on the server so you can add this option to the application host.config file this way system dot web server and in the security tab you can set so in this way we have covered the second part of uh, top 100 web api questions and answers